can set down, remove all cravings um, at the high, when you're taking the highest level of doses. Well, in this episode, I'm, we're going to talk about cravings and I'm going to share five triggers that you need to avoid that can cause you to overeat and gain weight. Hello, 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 bold, brave, and brilliant ladies and gentlemen. I've missed you. I've missed you. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I am Angela Durant. Thank you so much for tuning into Zep Down Journey with Ange. Uh, my friends call me Ange, and you can too. I've struggled with my weight uh, for most of my life. I've shared time and time again that um, I struggled starting at a very early age, maybe around age seven. And I've lost and gained and lost and gained over the years. Um, at my highest weight, I was 331 pounds. I'm only five, two and a half. So I'm not that tall. And on ZepBound, I'm currently taking 12.5 milligrams of ZepBound. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, ZepBound is a GLP-1 medication. It's, it's a dual agent. It has GLP-1 and it, does, it also has GIP, GIP. And... Um, Together, it's right now on the market. There are other medications in um, in trials, but right now it's one of the strongest, uh, most powerful um, obesity medication on the market. Right? It's made by Eli Lilly, and um, if you're not familiar with Zepbound, because a lot of people don't know about Zepbound, but they've heard of Ozepic, they've heard of Manjaro, they've heard of Wigovi, right? So Wigovi and Ozempic are pretty much the same drug made by Novo Nordisk. One was FDA approved for type two diabetes, which is Ozempic, and the other one, Wagovi, is FDA approved for weight management and obesity. Well, on the other side of the fence, we have um, Zepbound. So Zepbound and Monjaro, Monjaro are the same medications as well, same situation. FDA approved Monjaro for type two diabetes, and they approved um, ZepBound for weight management and obesity, okay? And then the, the, the doses of ZepBound and Manjaro, they're the same. So the starting dose is 2.5 milligrams, then it goes to 5 milligrams, then it goes to 7.5, then it goes to 10 milligrams, 12.5, and at the highest, it's 15 milligrams. I am currently on 12.5. I went from 5 milligrams, I started at 5 milligrams because I had already been on um, Ozempic and Sexenda, which is another medication that are made by um, Novo Nordisk. I had already been on those, so my doctor knew that I could tolerate the medications. So I was start. I started on five milligrams, and I went from five to seven point five. Did I do something? No, no, no. I went from five to ten milligrams. I just jump. I did a jump, and I was able to to tolerate ten milligrams, and that was perfectly fine for me. No problems. No really crazy side effects. And then I went to um, 12.5. And the reason I went to 12.5, I was losing at 10. But the reason I went to 12.5 was because of the shortage. I couldn't find it. and couldn't find the 10 milligrams anywhere. So my doctor uh, wanted to put me on the, she approved the 12.5 for me. And, um, and I was able to tolerate that fine. So that's the reason why I jumped to 12.5 milligrams. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar, some of you are old school, you've been here for a while, you know all the details about the medication, but those are um, some details for those of you who are new. Um, I've also tried everything before coming to um, be able to take this medication, and it's taken in an injection, right? So you can inject the medication, it comes in a pen, you can inject the medication in your tummy, in your arm, the back of your arm with, assist with somebody else's assistance or your thigh, right? And I've tried all the different places as well. Um, but before I came to that, I tried everything, right? I had two bariatric surgeries. I had the lap band in 2009. And I, I feel like I had a lot of success with the lap band. I was good for about five years. I lost 157 pounds uh, from the, the lap band, right? And the lap band restricts how much you can eat. And then I gained it back. Ten years later, I gained the weight back. And then my doctor recommended the gastric bypass, which I was so afraid of. But I felt like, you know, I, I want to live and I keep gaining weight. Like I keep gaining and gaining and gaining. And so it was a last resort. I had the, that surgery. And with that surgery, believe it or not, I did not lose as much weight as I did with 
the lap band. When the lap band lost 157 pounds, with the um, gastric bypass, I only lost about 30 pounds. And it's interesting that we have this community because the more people I get to know and meet here in the community, they have similar stories, which is, is not what you would think, right? You would think you have gastric bypass and you're, you're gonna be skinny, right? You're gonna be, you know, lose all that weight, but that wasn't my experience. So that brings me here with all of you today. Um, and for those of you who are new here, this community is for you if you're someone who is considering a weight loss medication. Um, if you're already on Zepbound, Wagovi, Saxenda, Ozempic, you're already on it and you're looking for a community of like-minded people, I will tell you that this community is one of the best there is. Um, and I will say that just because I created it, right? I say it because the people here are kind, they're compassionate, they are non-judgmental, um, and they're really caring people. And so, um, and I had a chance to get to meet some of you in person, which was fantastic. I'll tell you a little bit more about that too. Um, but if, if, if you're somebody who's been looking for a community of like-minded people, then we invite you to join us. All you have to do is subscribe. If you like what you hear here, like it, share it with other people. I know what I know is that 70% of Americans, 70% of, of our population is either overweight or obese. So you probably have friends who, who are on a GLP-1 medication and can benefit from what we talk about here. Um, so please share it with other people so that they can find us, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Today, I wanted to talk to you about um, cravings and triggers, right? Um, so I've been traveling for the last two weeks. Um, typically, by now, I would have had a couple more posts. So I apologize for the delay. I know some of you are like, Ange, where you at? Where are you? Where are you? Um, but I've been traveling. I was in Minnesota for a national um, convention. And I am I was appointed chief of staff for this nonprofit organization. And so I was very busy, right? I was there for a week. And now, and I left there, went home for one day to unpack, wash clothes, repack, make sure my son got packed up and then um, came to Massachusetts. So I'm in Massachusetts right now, and I am at um, a camp. I'm volunteering at a camp where my son is a camper, and it is one. It is an amazing place. It's called Atwater, and the camp is the very first African-American camp in the nation. It's over 100 years old. Um, and so uh, it's amazing and they have a really great programming here for young people. And so I'm volunteering here for the week. If I sound a little congested, that's because <laughs> I'm trying to get over a cold. I usually pick up a cold from flying and being around a lot of people. So um, if that's what you hear, uh, please uh, apologize. But that's where I am this week. And so the space might look a little bit different because I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the lodge and I'm recording from here. So. I just wanted to, to give you some background if you're like, Ange, where you been? Where you? <laughs> that's where I've been and that's where I am. And hopefully I'll be back to my normal routine next week. Um, and if you've been following me for a while, you know that when I travel, I struggle. When I travel, I struggle. I always give myself grace, but when I travel, I struggle. The very first time I started my journey in February, 2024, and then in March, I traveled, right? I was doing great, losing weight. I think I was maybe like 19 pounds down or something like that. I traveled, I went to Boston and I came back six pounds heavier, right? I was like, what's going on, right? So you know it when I travel, I struggle. And this these past two weeks have been no different, right? Um, and I think part of it is because of the break in my routine um, as well as my mindset around traveling. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Um, I, and, and I've also found myself to be working a lot of hours, like longer days, and that has uh, fed into um, the changes in how I eat and how I care for myself when I'm on the road. So I want to talk to you today about five triggers, right? Five triggers to avoid um, that cause weight gain, because yes, um, I have had some cravings and, um, and cravings make me a little nervous. And the reason that they make me nervous is because on this medication, it really helps with the um, um, head hunger, right? It helps with those cravings. Like it kind of takes that away. 
And now I felt like over the last you know, week or so, I felt like I've had more cravings than normal. And I'm almost at the highest dose. So I want to say to people, yes, you can still have cravings at the highest dose. And um, and I know that I can go up to 15, but I'm not ready to go at 15. I still want to hold at 12 because I think that there's an opportunity for me to continue to lose at 12. Um, but I have had some cravings and I think there's a few reasons why. So I want to d- dive into that with you because it ties into the triggers. Okay. So here we go. So let's talk about them. So, um, you know, the question was, can you have triggers on, can you have cravings on ZepBound when you're at about 12.5 milligrams? The answer is yes, you can. Right. Um, and so I want to give you the five triggers and I, and this, I was doing research and I pulled this and I could relate to these because I felt like, yep, that, that is a reason for, Um, A reason that kind of can derail me if I'm not careful. So the first trigger I want you to jot down, this is not in any necessarily necessarily, um, order, but it's just five of them I want to give you that may impact you differently, right? So um, the first trigger is um, emotional stress. The first one is emotional stress. So emotional stress can lead to um, emotional eating, right? Where individuals consume food to cope with feelings of stress, anxiety, or depression, right? And I want to share with you a a quick story about this time. I was traveling with a friend of mine. We were colleagues and friends, right? And um, I was always like hyper diligent about um, my travel, right? I always look at the tickets. I make sure I'm there plenty enough time to catch my flight. Anybody who knows me knows that I do not like rushing through an airport. Right. I like to be there super early, go to the bookstore, get a magazine or a book, sit and read and relax, have breakfast, whatever, and be there at the gate in plenty enough time. Like to me, the start of a trip or a vacation is no fun if you're racing through the airport. So I go on. We we actually went to a friend's wedding and um, this friend of mine and colleague booked the trip for us. Right. But I had my ticket. Right. So it's not it wasn't her fault. I had my ticket. And um, she, we got there fine. And on our trip back, which we gave ourselves, you know, enough time for the time we thought. When we looked at the um, ticket, when I looked at the ticket, um, both of us thought it was one o'clock, like one fifteen or something like that. Um, and we were in line, taking our time, joking, laughing, whatever. We get closer to the um, to the desk to to get um, our boarding passes. And we realized that, oh, my gosh. And they're calling. Last call, last call. The flight was like at 1115. And we were thinking it was like one something. Right. So we thought we were early enough for the flight. And actually, we were late. And we raced. We we ran through the airport. We raced to get there. The plane hadn't left yet, but the doors were closed. And for those of you who travel, you know, they close those doors. They're not opening them back up for you. Right. So in that moment, I was like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? We lost. We missed our we're missing our flight. Oh, my gosh. You know, panic um, set in. And I noticed the friend that I was with, she said she said, I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry. And I said I had put the responsibility on her like I was just going with the flow. Right. And I never do that. I never do that. But in this case, I did. Right. And she's very good about details and all that. And we both miss it. And she felt so bad. That the very first thing she did was she went to the Cinnabon, um, so the Cinnabon um, little store there in the um, in the airport and bought like a dozen Cinnabons, right? And she just started eating them. And I was watching her, and I could totally relate. And I was like, "It's not your fault. It's okay. We're gonna be fine. We'll figure it out, right?" But she felt so bad emotionally. She was distraught about missing the flight and then making me miss the flight too, right? That she started eating. And I could relate to that, but it, I could relate to it for myself, but I never saw somebody else in the moment doing that. So as soon as like, you know, one person, if you have that as a challenge, you can see, you can notice it in other people. And immediately I noticed it. I was like, she's eating to comfort herself because she's so stressed out, right? Um, so stressful eating is a thing. Um, let me know if, if that's something that you struggle with. So one of the management strategies given online about this was that you can practice stress reducing techniques such as mindfulness, 
meditation or physical activity also helps with this. Um, if you're if it's really extreme, you could talk to a therapist about it. Um, I find that because I know what it is, because I know that stress can bring on eating could be a trigger for me. Um, I can just pause in that moment. Um, not always, not always, but I can pause. I recognize it, right? You're aware. So that's like the first step, right? Being aware of it. I could say to myself, okay, you're stressed right now. Like, you know, this is a, a situation that's um, making you very emotional, right? And that's the reason why we we can eat, right? And it can be any kind of emotion, right? It could be you're angry with someone, right? You're sad, you know, um, you're happy, right? It's all those emotions. Um, there's like a connection between that and eating, right? There's something very soothing about the food when you have those, when you're feeling very emotional. So that's a trigger to watch out, out for. Trigger number two, trigger number two, and I've experienced this too, and I, let me know if you've experienced this, it's lack of sleep. Um, insufficient sleep can disrupt hunger home, hormones, leading to increased appetite and cravings for high calorie foods. Um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I'm tired, if I don't get enough sleep, if I don't get enough rest, um, I will munch, right? I'll just eat. I'll just eat if I'm tired. And I typically would go for carbs or high sugary foods, okay? So that's something for you to, um, to really be mindful of, right? Be mindful of that, that if you're tired, if you're not getting enough rest, that could be a trigger for why you're overeating, right? Or why you're eating foods that um, are, are not really on your plan, right? So aim to get your eight plus hours of quality sleep per night by maintaining a regular sleep schedule. So when I travel, I'm not on my regular sleep schedule, right? Um, you know, I'm working based on what, what's going on at the conference, all right? So that might be I'm up really early. And then I am, um, excuse me, I'm up really early and then I'm going to sleep really late. And that can throw you off, right? Um, so turn off the TV, you know, before, right before bed. They say you shouldn't be in front of a computer or on your devices, you know, an hour or so before you try to go to sleep. Those are things that can keep you awake, right? Um, so that is uh, trigger number two is lack of sleep. Trigger number three, trigger number three is environmental cues, environmental cues. So um, being in environments where unhealthy foods are readily available or frequently seeing food advertisements or talking about food. I know some people, and I apologize if that's you, some people, if I just start talking about food, it'll um, make you have cravings for food, right? But being in environments, this is all tied to traveling, right? For me, it's traveling because there are lots of foods there, right? I don't have my normal protein shakes, right, <laughs> available. Not that I couldn't have packed them in my luggage and put them in the fridge in the, in the um, hotel room. I could, but not every hotel room has a fridge. Um, and I, 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 I chose to pack extra pairs of shoes <laughs> over the protein drinks, right, <laughs> in my luggage, right? Um, so I didn't have those things. Usually at conferences, though, they do offer, the conferences that I go to, they do offer healthy meals and healthy options. There's always salads and people who are vegan or vegetarian. So they always have something healthy. My challenge is that they have it healthy. But when I'm traveling, I almost feel like, even though I know it's not a vacation, it's almost in a, my mindset, it's like vacation mode, right? And when you're on vacation mode, you know, yes, there's... Um, asparagus there and I may have some of the asparagus but there's tiramisu there too right <laughs> there are you know there are cookies there too right there are things that we typically you know would not have in our home you know as we're going on this journey that are there and readily available right um and depending on where I am you know it could be the num the days in that I am on my medication like maybe I'm on day five or day six and the cravings are even stronger it makes it harder to resist those foods, but that is a trigger that is readily available. It's right there in front of your face, right? It's right there. And um, so, and even if you only have a little bit, typically I, I can't eat much of it, but I might taste it, right? I may taste it. So those can be triggers. And I think adding sugar into my diet is also a trigger, 
right? I don't have that on my list, but I'm going to give that to you too while we're talking about it. Because I think the more sugar that I, I intake, the more I want, like the more I crave, right? The healthier I eat, the, the, the more nourished I feel. So I'm not really having cravings. But when I'm eating junk food, um, I will say when I, I'm here at camp, and they have Doritos. I like Doritos, right? And I was like, eating Doritos. Um, but the more, like, then they have cookies and all the things, right? Yesterday, they gave us ice cream sandwiches, right? I was like, I haven't had an ice cream sandwich in a long time. I'll have one. But I could only eat, like, a quarter of it, right, I did before I put it down. And I could never do that. So I know the medication is still working. I know the medication is still working. But I think there are things that I'm doing, too, like choices that I'm making, that's throwing off my chemistry, right? So, um, so I want to share that with you. So, when you travel, if you're somebody who travels, and you're in, and there are these cues, like you're in environments where they are serving certain foods, that may be a trigger for you. So, a management strategy for this is keep healthy snacks readily available to yourself. Avoid keeping junk food in your home and limit exposure to like food advertisements, right? You remember those, um, <laughs> those um, I think there were Burger King commercials. They used to say, aren't you hungry? Aren't you hungry for Burger King now, right? <laughs> um, so they know what they were doing. They got, they got it all figured out. They know what they were doing to, to trigger you, right? All right, so trigger number four. Trigger number four is social situations, social situations. So social gatherings often involve high calorie foods and drinks, right? Which can lead to overeating, right? So I know for me, I'm very social, right? I would go to events or at family gatherings. Like now it's, it's the summer in the US, right? It's summertime and people, are, it's warm here. People are having cookouts, right? They're doing all kinds of fun activities. Um, there's a lot of beverages, you know, I, I don't drink alcohol, but there are like sangrias and margaritas and all kinds of things available um, now. Uh, and socially, you just kind of feel like you want to partake. And I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I want to feel normal. I want to feel like I can have a little bit of what everybody else is having um, and, and fit in in that way, right? Fit in in that way that you just feel like you can eat normally, right? And the medication does help with that. Um, but socially, it could be a trigger because you're getting together. It might be things that culturally you're used to having that your family makes, right? That That is a trigger for you. So you have to be careful for that. One thing that I will tell you, and that I know the medication is working, is that even, even though I've eaten things that are off my plan, um, the amount of time that I can go without eating is amazing on this medication. It really, like I could go for hours and hours and hours without eating. And, and then in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have something. That's that put the, when I always say put the beast on the leash, that's how I can put it on the, on the leash. I can say, sit, <laughs> sit, not right now, not right now, right? Later when I go to the buffet and they got all the things, I may partake in some things I shouldn't have. But as far as waiting, before I couldn't wait. Like now I can, you know, I can, the, the time between meals can be spread apart more um, because of the medication. All right, let's jump back in. So the strategy for social um, situations that you find yourself in is one, plan ahead um, by eating a healthy meal before attending a social event. That's no fun though, right? <laughs> but you can still plan ahead to see what they're going to have and make up in your mind what you're going to have and what you're not going to have. And it might be some things that are, are delicious to you that you want to partake in that you've, you've accounted for that, right? Um, and then practice, practice mindful eating, like take your time chewing your few food, enjoy your food, focus on your portion too. I find that portions are pretty good with me. Like I find that I can navigate that pretty good on this medication, um, and try to make the healthiest choices that you can, right. Um, knowing that you're going to be, you know, where you are, right. If you're traveling. All right. And the fifth one I want to give you, the fifth one that I want to give you is boredom. It's boredom, right? Um, eating out of boredom rather than hunger can lead to consuming unnecessary calories, right? And the management strategy for that is engage in activities that keep you occupied and distracted from food, such as hobbies, reading, physical activities, 
I know when I'm bored, it's like I'm looking for something to do, right? <laughs> I'm looking for something to do. And that something to do might be eat popcorn, right? Or, or open the fridge or go to snack on something because you're bored, right? So I think when we know what the triggers are, and your triggers might be different, so think about that for yourself. But I think when we know what the triggers are, we're kind of armed. We're arming ourselves to um, be in a better position if we know what the triggers are, right? Like, oh, okay. Because you might ask yourself, why am I eating right now? Like, am I really hungry? I'm not really hungry, but I'm bored. Like, there's nothing to do here, right? So I just kind of want to do that. I will tell you, I've also been triggered by past behaviors, like memories of past behaviors. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. In the past, I used to, uh, when I go to conferences, they oftentimes could have been very stressful for me um, in the positions that I held. And by the time I get back to my hotel room, I just want to put on my PJs, de-stress, right? Unwind, and then order room service, right? <laughs> right? Order room service, and then I'd eat in my room. Right. And that so when I'm when I go to hotels, that is a trigger for me because that's a trigger of what I used to do in the past. I used to order room service all the time. Right. So think about what it is for you so that you can be. I think awareness is like the first line of defense. Right. That, that you know about it. The first line of defense. For all of us. Right. So those are the five i gave you five triggers possible triggers and answered the question about cravings can you still have cravings at 12.5 i'm telling you i i have had cravings at 12.5 and i think part of it has had to do with the food that i'm putting into my body like if i keep that stuff out i keep you know more sugar out of my diet i think i'll have less cravings but then there are all these other situations that are triggers that that cause you to overeat or eat foods that are not the healthiest for you. Okay, um, I want to. I do want to say that this episode is brought to you by my brand new program. It just finished. Um, we just finished up the beta. We are accepting clients into the program. It's called Be Brilliant on YouTube. Be Brilliant on YouTube, where um, we help you brand and build your YouTube channel so that you. Um, can share your stories of transformation, reach the audience that you're here to serve, and inspire hundreds of thousands of people. It is amazing the reach that you can have on YouTube. So just imagine being able to impact um, people that will never, you know, you don't even know, right? And and change the lives of so many people. I've had people reach out to me say and say, you don't know like how much you've helped me. Like I was afraid to take this medication. I was afraid of the needle. And I'm like, oh, the needle is nothing. You could hardly feel it, right? And they said, because of that, they tried it and now they've lost all this weight, right? They're much healthier. All their numbers are going down. So whatever it is for you, whether you talk about your weight loss journey or you talk about something else that's near and dear to you, um, YouTube is an amazing, amazing uh, platform. And I feel like it really is a partner versus the other platforms. Um, so I monetized my channel in just 45 days, could not believe it. And I wanted to share it with everybody. I told all my clients exactly what I did. I recorded, I took notes on what I did, what worked and what didn't. And I'd love to show you exactly how I did it too. So if you'd like my help in building your YouTube channel, and I always say this, I know it's not for everybody here. Some of you are like, I would never go on camera, but some of you out there know that you're sitting on a story, right? You're sitting on a wonderful transformational journey and you can inspire so many other people to get healthy, right? To get well, to, um, you know, to have confidence, like whatever it is that you want to talk about on YouTube, I would love to help you start your YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that, all you have to do is simply email me right now. All you have to do is email me at Angela at BeBrilliantMovement.com. That's Angela at B brilliantmovement.com. I'll put it in the show notes too. And just say, hey, I'm interested in starting a YouTube channel and, and I'd like your help. And I'd be happy to hop on a call with you, see if we're a good fit to work for the, together for the program and um, get you all signed up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a recap. What did we talk about? We talked about, can you have cravings even at the higher doses? 
Yes, absolutely you can. But I have friends like Around Mal from Zepbound and I have friends like um, 100 Pounds Down, um, Kristen over there. Like they don't really have the cravings. I know they haven't really had the, the super intense cravings on the medication. So everybody's journey is different. But for me at 12.5 milligrams, I have had cravings. I've also noticed that, you know, as the, the medication starts to wear off, the cravings start to come back. Is it like the food noise that I used to have in the past? No, it's not. Like I won't get dressed and go out at 11 o'clock at night to go find food, right? I, I don't do that anymore. That beast right there is on a leash. I don't do that anymore. So let's do a quick recap. So the number one trigger is emotional stress. Pay attention to how you're feeling if you're going for food, right? If you're getting create strong, intense cravings, what is going on that's driving that, right? It may be emotional stress. You may be anxious. You may be depressed, right? So pay attention to that. Number two, number two is lack of sleep. Get your rest. Take care of yourself. When you're traveling, sometimes it's hard, especially if you're in a role of leadership. People will be um, depending on you and you may have work to do early in the morning and late into the evening. So be careful for that and plan ahead if you can. OK, um, and then turn off all the devices and get from in front of the TV, things that help to start to um, be mindful of t doing things to help to um, relax you and calm you down, whether that's meditation, it's prayer, whatever it is. Maybe it's just sitting in quiet um, time so or reading a book or something like that. Number three, environmental cues. We got to pay attention to that, what's happening in our environment. You know, when I travel, that is a, tr a, a trigger for me that I need to be more careful of. Number four, social situations. When I'm around people, right, when we're doing things, I'm going out with my girlfriends or, you know, I'm going out on a date with my husband or, you know, I'm, I'm with family at a cookout, right? Those situations, social situations are traps for me, right? I can get jacked up <laughs> in those situations. So I want you to be armed with that information and be aware that that's something that can happen. And number five, boredom. Being bored um, is also something that um, can cause us to just munch, right? Because we're not doing anything. So we need to find something to do um, to keep us distracted from that, right? Because uh, it's not the healthiest thing for us, okay? Um, uh, and then what I've noticed is that the food that used to satisfy me, I wanted to share this with you. I really wanted to share this with you. Because this is what I noticed um, just the other day. I was eating some. I think I was eating Doritos, right? <laughs> I know. You're like, Ange, what you going to eat with Doritos? Um, but I like Doritos. And I was eating Doritos. And I noticed that they didn't give me the same satisfaction that they used to in the past. Like, I would eat them and, and have a Sprite and be like, oh, yeah, this is really good. You know, I got savory. I got something sweet. And I noticed that it doesn't, like, it's, it doesn't give me the same um level of satisfaction that it used to. And I know that's because of the medication. So then I'm not eating a whole bag of Doritos. I'm like, mm, all right, let me put that down. It's okay. It tastes okay. It's not that the taste isn't the same. The taste is the same, but I guess the chemical reaction in my body isn't the same. Um, if that makes any sense to you, like it doesn't, it's not giving me that same high, right? Or that same level of comfort that um, it did in the past. So it's really strange. I think our makeup, if you're anything like me, the our brain chemistry and our body chemistry is different, right? And I know that with the medication, um, I don't get the same satisfaction, which is a good thing, right? Because then I'd be eating like, I just had a little bag of Doritos. I'd be eating like the big bag of Doritos, right? Because you can't just eat one, right? It's like, they're like, it's like chips, right? You can't just eat one. Um, but I want to share that with you because I, that was something that was interesting that happened to me that I, I noticed. Right. So uh, I want to share that with you. So if this has added value to you, I want you to um, to join us, to join us. There's so many of you to watch the video that haven't subscribed and it's so easy to subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button and it'll help our little channel grow. And I will appreciate it. And if you subscribe, please let me know right now. I respond to every single comment and we get lots of comments. <laughs> As you can see, if you scroll through, you'll see um, on our videos, we get lots of comments. But I like to personally I welcome you. So please, if you do hit the subscribe button, let me know. Put in the comments like, hey, Ange, I subscribe, right? Um, that would be wonderful. And then I love all of the questions and comments 
um, please keep them coming. Anything you want me to talk about, let me know. Um, I like to share my experiences with you. I got, I come back with stories. I'm sharing them with you. Um, and you know, I, I always like to cheer you on. So I want to know what your wins were this week. I want to know how you did um, because that energizes me too when I hear how well you're doing and the community can celebrate you and then other people who may be struggling can see that it's possible because you're doing it. So please um, share your comments there. I promised that I would give you an update on the retreat too. I think I told you guys a little bit about the retreat in my last post. And um, and I promise I would post some pictures. So I don't I don't have the pictures ready to post them right now, but I will post some pictures from our retreat. It was fantastic, though. It was so nice to meet some of you in person. And and I've gotten some um, emails from you. So thank you for emailing me. As soon as I get settled down, I will respond to you your emails regarding the next um, retreat. Because some of you are like, Ange, I want to come to the next one. I want to come to the next one. Let me just say <clears throat> that one. It's amazing to be able to um, interact with you here on YouTube and build friendships here on YouTube and then have the ability to come offline and meet each other in person, right? That has been so wonderful. Um, I, you know, I, 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 you know, you guys already know how I feel about you um, in on, on YouTube because we come, you know, you put in the comments and we go back and forth. But meeting you in person is a whole nother it takes it a whole nother level. And being able to talk to you and being able to see you connect with other people in the community and see how you have so many things in common. And I will tell you in the retreat, the women who were in the room, we didn't have any brilliant men in the room. They're all women. So, guys, I'm looking for you the next time. I'm looking for you to come. Um, for, for the women who were in the room, they were so supportive of each other. And that warmed my heart because there were women who really needed a place to let their hair down and share what was going on with them where their family members couldn't always understand or relate, but they were in an environment of people who, um, could get, they get it right. They understood the journey. And so, um, so that there were breakthroughs in the room, the women had a wonderful time. We had um, speakers. We had guest speakers here. Um, we had a, a stylist from D.C. who was amazing, who did one on ones with every person who came. Right. She was going to just do a few, but she did them. She extended that service to everybody who was here. Of course, we did the clothing swap. I think I went home with, with the majority of the stuff because I'm bigger than everybody else. They're, they were smaller than me. Right. <laughs> and so um, I, I literally when I tell you, I probably went home with like two thousand dollars worth of clothes and most of them were still had the tags on them and they were great brands and very well made clothing like i thought i hit the jackpot <laughs> i was so happy about that and shout out to the ladies that i talked to who told me that we should do a, a clothing swap that came from the community shout out to the lady who said to me oh you should have somebody come in to teach us around fashion because as our bodies are getting smaller we want to you know still be looking sharp right still looking good so shout out to you because you helped me create that retreat. So for the, all of those who gave me feedback, even if you weren't able to come, you still told me what it should be look like. We created that for you. And we had a chef. Chef Maureen was here. She cooked everything in front of us. And the food was so healthy. It was so healthy and so nutritious um, that I was like, you know, my concern, my hesitation was, OK, the food's going to be um, healthy. I knew it was going to be healthy, but, you know. Is it going to taste good, right? <laughs> Is she going to season it right for me? Because I like my food well seasoned. And she did a fantastic job. It was delicious. The food was delicious. So I promise I'm going to share pictures with you um, probably in the next post. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. So if you're interested in coming to the next retreat, um, you can email me and let me know that too. Um, of course, the spaces are limited. And we want to do a small group because it gives us an opportunity to really get to know each other. And I don't want anybody to get lost in a big group, right? Um, so that's open to you. That's an opportunity available to you too. And don't forget, be brilliant on YouTube. So if you want to um, start to share your story, um, like I'm doing, you want to build your own community, you want to be a leader of your own community, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I'll show you how to do it. It's not that hard. Um, and you don't have to be an expert to do it or a tech savvy, right? <laughs> it's not hard. Um, so with that, I just wanted to say, um, thank you for being so patient. I know it's been um, a little bit since I've done a video. Um, I think it was like a week, over a week. And typically I do multiple. 
Um, so thank you for being so patient. Just know that I'm traveling. I'm trying to do all the things. Um, but I miss you guys. I miss you guys. So please um, let me know how you're doing in the chat because I want to get an update because just like um, some of my stories inspire you, your stories inspire me too, right? You, you, your um, stories motivate me when I hear like, oh, she's down 10 pounds, you know, like I love that. So please continue to share with me. Um, and I read every single comment. I re read every single one. So please um, share that with me. And as always, I want you to go out there. I want you to be bold because it takes boldness to lead um, this journey, right? You guys are, some of you are like on the cutting edge of taking this medication before everybody else is coming. They're coming, but you're one of the first to take it. So, um, and it takes boldness to do that, right? I want you to be brave, right? Because you, you're showing up, you raise your hand, you're being vulnerable, right? You're saying, I need help, right? You're, you're putting your pride aside and saying, I can't do it on my own. Um, and that's okay, right? That's okay because you're putting your health first and you want to get healthy and well and strong. And I salute, I salute you for that, right? I honor you for that. And I want you to be brilliant because you are, and people are watching your transformation and your transformation is amazing, right? For the retreat, we talked about transforming from the inside out, right? We talked about this internal transformation, right? And the internal transformation is about you reaching your highest potential, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and, you know, the, the medication is going to take care of it. Like you're going to lose the weight. You're going to start slimming down. But inside, I want you to be strong and vibrant and resilient on the inside, right? And so, and that shows up as light, right? That shows up as you shining, right? And that shows up in such a way that other people notice you. Other people are gonna be inspired by you, right? And that's you being brilliant, right? So go out there, be bold, be brave, and be brilliant. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love you guys. Take care. Bye for now. Bye.